You're listening to the Higher Calling Podcast, your source for all things hiring, staffing, and recruiting. I'm Pete Newsom, and I'm joined by Ricky Baez once again today. Ricky, how are you? I'm doing good, Pete. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing wonderful. It's a beautiful Monday morning in, in Florida. How, how bad could life be? It, it not bad. Here's how good life is. Guess what I did Friday? What did you do? I got to go to the Jacksonville Jaguars draft. No, Thursday, Jacksonville Jaguars draft party. That was awesome. <laughs> I just got to say that was awesome. Not big. I'm about to get beat up here. I'm not a big Jaguars fan. I'm more of a Tampa Bay, Buffalo Bills, Giants fan. Um, but let me tell you, man, that that whole Duval thing, it's it's taking you, you, off your you, you have to embrace it while you're there. You know, I was at uh, the Jags uh, home playoff win last year where they were down, I think, uh, Lawrence started with four interceptions, yeah. I believe, in the first half. And yeah. And then they came back and won. And uh, let's just say the Duval chants were, uh, <laughs> were, were plentiful. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they were. Trust me. So that's a new thing. So I'm embracing it. I'm embracing it. Great weekend. Good. Well, well, today we're, we're here to, to, to talk about how to be a good mentor. This is something that um, you know, from your HR uh, heart and profession, you, you know quite a bit about, I think, and, and probably have some thoughts on. I do. I was actually talking about this at the Jacksonville Sherman Manual Conference on Thursday. Um, I was talking to them on how to revamp their their employee life cycle and how you and I were uh, talking just before we we uh, we went live. You know, it, it's organizations tend to spend so much time on attracting and recruiting talent and not nearly enough time to cultivate that talent and keep the talent in. So a mentor, a good mentorship program is a great way to start your employee off on the right foot. So let, let's just start at the, at the top with that. And, you know, what is a mentor in the professional world? So a mentor does the same thing as a leader is supposed to be doing with their employees, but a little bit more personal, right? Because a leader is supposed to make sure that the person's work is up to par and make sure that they, they, they give the proper motivations for the employee. What a mentor does, it focuses more on the employee than the work. And it makes sure it, he or she makes sure that the employee has everything they need to be successful internally, right, within themselves and make sure they do good with the, within the organization. It's a more personal touch. Understood. And so, you know, when you you're talking about it from the perspective of an employer an employee relationship, but a mentor relationship really supersedes that, doesn't it? It doesn't have to be. You can have a mentor from a different organization. You can have a mentor that isn't in tied to even tied to your industry in in some cases, right? That is true. Actually, I just took on uh, on a mentee a couple of weeks ago, and she works in the finance industry. Um, you know, she just wants to get to know more into human resources. So you're right. He, uh, the 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 relationship does not have to be within the same four walls of the organization. It could be just any other relationship that the people might have outside of those walls, and they have that understood goals. So yes, so it's a that's a commitment to to take on, <laughs> right? Especially when it's not part of your job description, so to speak. So let let's kind of go through what you your responsibilities are in that role of as a mentor what do you look to deliver to that person who needs your your help and advice well just just what i did with this other person a couple of weeks ago we went to lunch had a great conversation i just asked her where do you want to be in a year what is it that you want to do in 12 months from now because we're going to meet once a month where do you want to be in exactly 12 months from now that this whole relationship is going to help you get there and then i work myself backwards right i reverse engineer it to see what kind of sessions we need to have up that way she's on the right path to be to hit that goal in 12 months so i start off with a uh, with a meeting just laying out what the goals are going that the main goal is going to be and then um uh each milestone every month what those are going to be so we could track it pretty good okay nice and, and then so the, the, those traits that that to be a good mentor let's 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 go through some of those so one of the things that that you should be feel responsible for is to offer insight from your own personal and professional experience, right? I mean, that's sort of the basis of the relationship, is it not? 
No, co correct. I mean, it, it, if somebody's looking for a mentor, that means that you're looking for somebody that has the breadth of, of knowledge and experience that you don't have that you're looking to gain for yourself, right? So, so you're looking to learn from that tree or eat from that tree. Ah, I'm going to put that on a on a, on a t-shirt. <laughs> so, but yeah, you know, there has to be that, that experience there. I've, I, I have yet to see a mentor um, in any industry that has less than a year experience in that specific industry. I mean, you, right. you, so, you yeah, you, yeah, I'm sorry. You we're not going to recommend <laughs> that uh, someone goes to a mentor who um, it was a junior in their profession, right. Or, or relatively new, you want to go after someone who has, um, has some number of years and has done a lot and seen a lot, hopefully. Right. And so we hate to put a, a number on something like that, but there has to be enough seniority for, for it to really count or, or you're, or you're not going to get much value from that relationship. Oh, absolutely. And be well-respected in their field. Right. You, you, it, you as a mentee or a mentee to be, um, you should spend just as enough time trying to find the, the a, a great mentor as a mentor does to a mentee. Right. Same thing with a uh, with a candidate looking for a job. There's that interview process where you get to know each other pretty good and you decide whether this is the right relationship to go forward with. Yeah, there's a lot that uh, back to the responsibility of, of being that mentor, you're, you're not only going to have to share your advice and experience and, and but it needs to go beyond that. You're, you're going to be in a role where you're encouraging and supporting and uh, giving giving tips uh, for how to go forward, right? I mean, it's it's a lot more than just, hey, Ricky, tell me what you've done. If, if the relationship is going to count, you need to help provide some guidance for that mentee going forward. So 100% spot on, but also you have to be really, really authentic and honest with the person. Because if the person is making a mistake or he or she is going down that wrong route, you've got to have that backbone and the people skills to pull them back and saying, what are you doing? Don't go that route. Don't do this. Don't do that. And it may be information that the mentee is not going to like, right? But you have to have that backbone still to let them know what they're doing because that's valuable, valuable information. Can we step back real quick? I think we're forgetting one thing. And sure. you mentioned that, Pete, and I think I gloss over it, and I apologize for that. It's the time commitment. Yes. You have to agree to that time commitment because this is just that same conversation I had. I told her, look, I am willing to carve out an hour and a half of my time every month to sit here with you. I'm not going to have any other distractions. We're going to have a conversation to help you get to your goal. I need the same from you. So if I hear, oh, I can't because of this, I can't because of that, I'm done. I'm not going to continue with this relationship because it, it, it's I'm carving time out of my my um, uh, uh, day and time to make sure that I meet with you. I would appreciate the same thing. Not that she's going to do that, but you got to have that conversation. That makes sense. I mean, you need to, you need to set some ground rules up front. Yeah. Right. That's right. And that is benef uh, will benefit both sides where you, you, if those expectations aren't aligned, someone could easily get frustrated or disappointed and, and have something that should end up being a very good thing. And I, I believe there's a lot of reward for the mentor as well. I mean, we generally as, as humans like to help people and it makes us That's feel right. good. And we learn while helping in many cases. But so, so there's upside on, on both sides of this in theory, but there's potential for it to go wrong if you don't if you don't set those expectations accordingly. So that's a good point to bring up for sure. Um, yeah, we, when you're going through this um, uh, this this commitment, do you have any advice on what what is a uh, how often should someone someone meet? Or really, should it be uh, specific to the situation itself? Whether it's weekly, monthly, more mm -hmm. often, you know, less less frequently. What do you recommend there? So. It, it, it depends on, on, on the experience and the time commitment of both people involved, right? Because um, in, in my situation, this person was one of my students, so she has a, you know, some experience in HR, but she wants to get more experience. So we decided one time a month is perfect. That's perfect for, for, for this relationship. But let's say that experience just isn't there on the mentee side. And you may want to meet more often, have a more um, a consistent cadence, maybe once a week or every other week. Because if, if 
if the if the HR foundation from 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 my perspective is not there, right? And if I'm meeting once a month, chances are that person's gonna forget whatever information we talk about from month to month. So we may have to meet more often. So really it depends on the experience of both and the kind commitment, the time commitment of both to be able to decide how often you should meet. But you need to get to hash those out at the very beginning of that relationship. And you you said something that uh I think is as important as anything else in this, where you have to be willing to share the information that oh, you believe yeah. needs to be heard, not necessarily wants to be heard. And Ricky, I think that comes up in almost every conversation we have these days where you and I are giving advice most of the time, not always, but, but most of the time we're talking to a younger audience, people who are uh, newer in their careers and, we want to be sure to give that real world advice and it's not always popular. It's not always taken well, but it's an absolute necessity to be effective. And I think we're very much uh, on the same page with that. No, we are, you know, it makes, it makes no sense or it doesn't help anybody if you sugarcoat everything in that conversation. Cause again, the goal is not to be personal, not to attack the person personally, but the goal is to hit your milestones every month that moves your bigger goal to your annual goal. So yeah, you have to be okay with neck. I don't want to say negative information. You have to be okay with information you don't like. And you have to do what I like to call is having conversations with yourself. When you feel like you're upset because somebody told you something, go to the bathroom, look in the mirror. What are you really upset at? What are you really upset at? Are you upset at yourself? Because this is something you should have thought of before. Are you, are you upset at the person or how she, he or she delivered that message? Take a look at yourself and don't take this too seriously. Well, we're talking about professional advice, generally speaking. And, and I think the line probably crosses sometimes into personal advice. Oh, yeah. These things blend together uh, often in a conversation uh, that you would have as a mentor. How do you, what do you think the biggest challenges are right now to, uh, you know, for younger people who, who are hearing uh, you know, from, from those who you know, are seasoned veterans, so to speak in, you know, because we know that society continues to evolve, that there's been generational changes. And this is also what comes up often during our conversations on subjects mm -hmm. like this. So do you have any uh, thing in particular that comes to mind that, that in your role as a mentor, if, if it's a student, I'm, I don't, I probably shouldn't make this assumption, but I will, that it's a younger person who is, uh, has a lot, a long way to go in their profession. What, what are the challenging things you think you'll have to deliver in terms of this advice? So this person's in the middle, right? So, okay. but, but here's what I found, Pete. What I found is I find it easier. Oh God, th th this is going to come out bad. I find it easier to mentor a younger person that doesn't have any other responsibilities outside of work, because I have found that it's difficult to mentor, not difficult, but it will. Yeah. You know, I'll say that it's difficult to, to mentor somebody who's a little bit more established in their personal life because you, you as a mentor, you don't only have to deal with what's happening in their work. You're having to deal with what's happening at home as well. And then sometimes you have to communicate, you know what, the reason you're not excelling at work is because X, Y, and Z is happening at home. So sometimes you got to put on that psychological hat there, Pete. Right. Right. <laughs> and then have that conversation. <laughs> There's a lot of considerations that, 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 yeah. that come with that. So let, let's go through a, a list. We have a few points that, yes, that's right. We think make up, um, you know, if you, if you answered how to be a good mentor, what would be at the top of that list for you? And we've yeah. covered some of these broadly, but let's, let's get a little more narrow. How to be a good, you have to me, the thing that that stands out to me, you how to be a good mentor, you have to love to help people. And I know to some people that 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 comes across. Well, duh, Ricky, that's a given. Pete, you know how many people I've met that hate helping people? And you know how many of those are in the healthcare industry? <laughs> I've met some nurses that should not be nurses, but I've also met some nurses that are amazing and they love to care for people. So all I'm saying is, is that you have to have a genuine interest in truly helping that mentee, even if that mentee a couple of years later surpasses you in your career. I've seen that happen too. And then some people get upset at that. 
even though that should be the goal, right? If you're, of course. If you're taking on this role, <laughs> right. then that should be what you strive for is it let, let, you know, to help that person ultimately be better than, than you are. Um, but I can see where that would, um, you know, depending <laughs> on the situation, if they work for the same company uh, in a senior and junior role that started, if that flipped, yeah, I could see that. Uh, I will be happy though. I would be happy if my employee, if because of how I help my employee and they got a promotion somewhere else, they're a VP and I'm a director. I'll be happy with that. You wouldn't. I would, oh, I, I would hope I yeah, would, right? I would, but I can yeah. see that you know, that that may not always. Uh, it could hurt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that's easier said than done at times. I'll, I'll say. I agree. Right? I mean, yeah, we're, you're right. you know, again, human nature to some degree. Um, you you want to, uh, yeah, you, you you you. We all we all should we all should be so noble, right? Uh, but I don't know that that's always possible. So, um, <laughs> but, I mean, yeah, we are human. So yeah, you're right. I get but, it. But I think that plays into um, it, it's a good segue into one of the, the other points that we believe uh, make a good mentor, which is you have to be genuine in in your approach, right? So if you if you're holding back information for that reason, then then that's not genuine at all. You're not being a good mentor. You really have to be willing to share all your secrets, so to speak, don't you? It all your secrets and your connections your connections as well. This reminds me of that one scene in The Godfather when the guy comes over to uh, to buy um, his political influences, right? He wants to buy the uh, politicians that The Godfather has in his pockets. I mean, at least that's how it comes back to me. Um, from a mentor's perspective, obviously, if you have that much experience, you have a wide network, you have to be able to share that network. You have to be able to introduce your mentee to everybody in that network. And here's why you should do that, right? You, it, it, it's, it's, and maybe we should have let off with this, Pete. Um, if you're going to um, take on a mentee, you're going to be a mentor, you have to understand that that mentee now is the representative of you. They're going to represent you. So you have to be able to pick the right mentee and you have to be able to pick somebody that represents you in the light in which you want to be seen out there. So, yes, you've got to be able to pick somebody not only who's really witty, who's really smart and is, has hunger for the field, but somebody who carries themselves with the same goals, with the same uh, core values as you want to be seen out there as well. Uh, a little bit of a of a change here uh, of direction. But what happens in, in a relationship where you realize those values don't align? Uh, what what because that that's a real situation that I'm sure mm -hmm. occurs where the mentor and mentee. At some point, you know, it's all it's all looks it looks great on the surface, right? When you're coming into a new relationship with someone, the honeymoon period, if you will. Mm -hmm. But once you start to go down the road a little bit, you may realize that you're you're not in alignment with your ideals and and beliefs. And that, I mean, is is it okay to acknowledge that, or is it necessary to acknowledge that and just say this? Let's 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 stop the journey before it continues too far. As soon as you realize there's misalignment, stop, have a meeting and recalibrate. And, you, and, and it, it's important to understand. And actually, it's important to never assume the reason for the misalignment. Right. Maybe the person is doing something different and didn't realize that the core values are misaligned. But you got to stop in, as soon as you find out about it and just have a conversation to recalibrate. Because if you don't do that, you get, you're going to continue to go the opposite way. And then people are going to start to wonder, are they really a mentor mentee relationship there? Because they're they're talking very different from one another so yeah you should stop immediately and then recalibrate to see if continuing is the best option or not okay and i know you're a star wars fan so of course this this uh you know, reminds me of of you know, you know how how um you know how these relationships that start off great right may not may not always end up well you know just saying you know you're that's you're, right <laughs> yeah you're creating more data <laughs> along the way um, oh my hold on i didn't even think about that could you imagine if I, if if you and I had a mentee and they and they they end up being really successful and they end up being the one that completely disrupts the business in a negative way? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I, I think again, it's it's um, I don't want to equate it to raising a child, but that is it, there's some similarities there. Of course, not nearly the same depth and closeness, but not you know sometimes children stray. Sometimes they take yeah. information and 
interpret it uh, differently than intended and, and go uh, off in a different direction. And I think that's a natural thing to happen uh, in life. And, and again, there's it's true. The generational changes are so real in a situation like this and the different perspectives where it's, I think, for a young person to or a less experienced person, I don't mean to associate with age. So a less experienced person to hear advice from someone who's uh, who's done a lot of whatever there is they're sharing advice on, but they did it in a different era. They did it in a different Mm -hmm. time and place in the world. So it's not always going to um, be perfectly in sync and and that's okay, but it doesn't, it doesn't mean learning from the past and learning from someone who has experience from a, a, from a different perspective, isn't equally valuable. It just means Mm -hmm. it may not always be as relevant today. Right. right? I mean, trust me, my kids remind me of that all the time when I'm giving them advice. (laughs) The world that I I grew up in no longer exists. And I get that. I cannot wait for my nine-year-old to start talking back to me that way. Um, there, there's another thing P here that really it's, it's, it's hitting me right in the chest and it's perfect. Celebrate their achievements. So this is from a mentor's perspective. This is crucial, right? Because the mentee has some things going on at their life. They have some things going on at, at, at their work life that you may not be able to see or even attend. What I'm saying is, is that although that's not in your radar as a mentor, you have to show up for those things. If they got a promotion at their job, you got to be there to celebrate. If they something happened at their job or even at home, you have to be there to to separate, separate, celebrate, not to separate, to yes. actually celebrate. So you know what else, Pete? Um, especially people with families, this is this is a bonus tip that I want to give people. If you're mentoring somebody that already has a family. Chances are you're going to end up end up mentoring the entire family. You are because you're going to get to know them. Right. And you have to get to know their families because you have to know what's happening at home as well. Right. And also this helps because, look, you you're going to want to know where your spouse, who, who your spouse is hanging out with. <laughs> Right. After hours, all these times. Right. So you have to be around the family as well. That way, when you're no longer there giving them advice you that you want your mentee to go home and have the support system who believes in that relationship enough to be able to support them at home. That way they can hit their goals. Right. So you're not mentoring just one person. You're almost mentoring an entire uh, marriage. <laughs> that's a deep, that's a deep commitment though. That, that's, I mean, that's, oh, you know, you're, we, so you, you know, this is not something you should take on lightly is what you're saying, because um, that, that's a commitment. Not, not many people, will be willing to make, have time to make. Uh, it's it's a big deal. Yeah, that's why I do just just one a year, if that. And this mentee that I just started with, I met her husband, her son, you know, and we had a good conversation to make sure that he is fully aware of what we're working on, that we, he knows how to support um, at, at home as well. So, yeah, it is a huge commitment. But you know what, Pete? I love it. I love well, it. So one of the other important points, I think it's absolutely necessary based on everything you just said is to, is to make sure the relationship is built on a solid foundation of trust. Oh yeah. And absolutely. That, that has to be in place on both sides. So be honest and open with all that you're sharing, um, which again is also a really big commitment to make to someone um, because we don't always do that in our relationships in business or in, in life. True, true. And, and it, it, you know, it's, and it's weird because it's, it's free. Nobody pays for this, right? This is time that you're both investing in that you both deem valuable. So yeah, it, it, it's, it, now that I'm thinking about it, it's a lot, Pete. It is a lot. You sure you, <laughs> sure you need to go back and reconsider? What I you can't believe you're talking me out of it. I'm going to no, talk to no, him no. like, hey, we, you we talk see, me out of it. Look, we, it's a great thing to do. There's benefits as we've established um, on both sides, but yeah. what we haven't talked about are some things not to do. What, what do you what What should you avoid oh. in this relationship? I mean, what are the what are the things to just not not do ever? I I learned this one early on, and 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 I'm just gonna come out and say it is assume you are the the problem solver. I learned this one a long time ago, long time ago, where if somebody was to come to me with a, you know, in a meeting and they bring 
an issue. I, I incorrectly assumed that they wanted me to solve it. And what I've learned throughout the years is, you know, sometimes you should be the problem solver. Sometimes you just need to be the soundboard. Just take a step back, listen to what they have to say. Do not be judgmental. That, that, that is the biggest way to turn somebody off, it to be judgmental. Now, there's a big difference between being judgmental and recalibrating, right? So recalibrating is just, hey, let's come back. Let's meet again to make sure that our priorities are still the same. Judgmental is talking down to somebody because they did or didn't do something. They, it, it's, it's, that's not going to help that relationship at all. So, again, um, the biggest mistake you could do is assume that you have to solve everything and being judgmental from my perspective. Okay. I mean, one, that, that makes sense, right? Um, I think one of the, the most important things, if you make this commitment after all we've talked about, is you have to be accessible. Oh, yeah. If, if you are going to, to make that commitment – you need to pick up your phone when it rings. You need to answer the text when it comes. And uh, because if someone is is going to rely on another person for help and advice, you can't forecast or predict when those needs are going to arise. And just like a parent with a child, your phone's always on, right? Yep. And so you have to be accessible always. Here's my problem, Pete. I answered every call. Whether it's regardless how late it is and, you know, and I, I – now, this is my problem. I have to draw boundaries because even if a call comes in at 1 a.m., I'm looking at it and I'm like, oh, OK, is if I ignore it, this person knows not to call me this late. This is this is an emergency. And I answer it. But this is this is um, that's a line I have to draw. I'm not saying that happens all the time, but you do have to draw a line to make sure when it's appropriate to call and not to call. Ricky, I think I think you just gave the equivalent of of answering in an interview. What are your biggest weaknesses? And you just said, "I'm I'm too good at what I do. I'm too much of a perfectionist." I think I think I think that's what I, I have a hard for. time saying no. That's, that's right. <laughs> I go in b above and beyond constantly, and I can never stop. Oh, Pete, right? We need to do a live about all of those answers. <laughs> what are the worst ways to answer that question? Well, you I, I, you I know. do with them now. So, so that's, so that, so that's great. I think the last point thing not to do is don't try to steer the direction too much. Uh, if mm -hmm. you are volunteering to, to help someone, you need to help where they need it mm -hmm. and not make assumptions there either. Do you agree with that point? Agreed a hundred percent. You need to be the employee's GPS system. A GPS system on your phone or in your car has a lot of information of a lot of different addresses, but somebody has to, has to, point where you, where they want to go and you have to create that path for there. That's what a mentor is. I like that. I like right? that. That's a good, that's a good visual for, for us on, on this. I'm so, going to, I'm going to write that down too for a t-shirt. Yeah. You have, you have a multiple <laughs> t-shirt day today. <laughs> I'm going to start a business. Watch a t-shirt business. <laughs> so, so last, last question on this, that, that uh, do you think that it makes more sense to have a mentor in your same organization or, does it make sense to seek one um, externally? So that's a good one. That's a good question. And oof, you caught me off guard with that one there, Pete. So here's, here's how I'm going to answer that. If you are looking to move up in your organization, if you're looking to stay in your organization, it would be a good idea to find a mentor who's a couple of levels or a level up than you more experienced than you, obviously, but more senior than you in that organization because that person is going to have keys to a lot of doors you're not going to have. So I think if you're looking to move up in a specific organization, I think it's a good idea to find a mentor in that organization. Now, remember what I said about going home and having a conversation with yourself, okay? Go home, look in the mirror. And I, I'm, I'm being serious here, but ask yourself, do people like you? Because if people don't like you, nobody's going to pick, nobody's going to mentor you, right? And, and I'm just being serious. And if you go out there and everybody tells you no, you're going to have to have another conversation about why doesn't anybody want to mentor you? So you have to take a look at your own toolbox and how you're coming across to see what you need to tweak to be mentorable. I just made that up, right? Because <laughs> because you've got to be mentorable. Yes. And if you, and if you're not doing that, it's just not going to happen. All right. So be likable. That is, be uh, likable. That is, a, good, <laughs> that is a good trait.
The hell? It is. Now, if you're looking to just um, uh, uh, improve yourself and move up elsewhere, go somewhere else, what I would do, I would find a mentor in an organization or in a position you want to be in, right? And, and that is when your relationships, cultivated relationships on LinkedIn and social media are such a, a great tool for that. Because if you build that relationship with somebody, let's say if you want to work for Apple and you want to be an HR director at Apple, you build up a relationship, a recruiter there, or somebody there, a senior director there to the point that, hey, they'll take you as a, as a mentee. Go for it. Absolutely yeah. go for it. So it really depends on where you want to go in your career. You responded nicely to that one. I put you on the spot Woo, and you, you delivered. You. So well <laughs> done. You. I think you're off the hook for, for the rest of this episode. But but let's so let's so let's wrap episode, that up. So not day. <laughs> not, not not the day. No, the day is still not young. It. It's not even eleven a.m. So, not easy, so let, yeah. but let, let's let's summarize what we you know, what we talked about in terms of you know how to be a good mentor. Number one, set expectations up front. That's right. In terms of how often you're going to get together, what you each look to to get out of the relationship, that is imperative to, to begin in the best possible way. Number two, be genuine in your interest. Make sure if you're taking the step and you're making the commitment that you mean it and you plan to deliver along the way, even if that means helping your mentee surpass you um, in, in the role and in, in the profession. I, I like that you brought that up because um, it is something that we all – can't do easily, but should consider if if we're truly trying to help in the best possible way, right? It's an that's important right. thing to commit to. Um, build trust. That's huge. Um, share your experiences. Share. Be willing to share your secrets to, of success at, at all costs, right? That's another one. And failures. And share failure. your failures. That is something people do not do because because they, they're ashamed of it. And yes, I know it feels that because I've made my mistakes. I'm sure you have. We've all have. But one of the best ways I learned, Pete, is picking up a biography of somebody because you'll be able to see that that person has some of the same failures as you've experienced. And next thing you know, you're more relatable and they see that you're not such a big machine, a superstar. So you got to be good enough with yourself to share the good and the bad. That way you can help somebody else with it. I love it. And also, I believe very strongly that learning comes from failures much more yep. so than from success. Because when you succeed, you you can make incorrect assumptions that you're doing things mm -hmm. in, in, in the best way or in the right way. When realistically, you may just be getting lucky. So when you fail and, and you learn from it and you improve from it, well, that's you know, that's more meaningful, right? Absolutely. Um, especially to someone who you're trying to help to, to avoid those those pitfalls and mistakes himself. So um, that's a great point to bring up. Um, the other the other highlights from this are don't always try to. Um, to direct the the path, right? Let your let your mentee ask for the help that they need and the advice that they need. Don't always try to set um, too many directions. Uh, open your open your your connections to to your right. mentee. That's that's one that you have to be willing to to commit to up front. And then the last one is celebrate their achievements. That's and right. Be present for that along the way, and you know, because you never know, maybe no one else is for that individual. So. Uh, commit to, to playing that role as well. Did, did we leave anything out, Ricky? No, I don't think we did. I'm looking on here and, oh, teach them how to cook the perfect ribeye steak. That's yeah. <laughs> You know, how to, throw, that you know how to throw that in there. That was, that was in my notes, really big and bold. <laughs> all right. Well, we, you have to cover all the bases, and, and I think we have now. So there you we did. go. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, now, good. Now well, we're getting a request. You. Thank you for your time as always. Thank you for listening uh, to this episode of the Higher Calling Podcast. Uh, rate us, review us, give us feedback. And also, we love taking requests for new episodes. So if you have anything to share, we'd love to hear from you. Ricky, thank you. Have a great rest of the day. Thank you. You too. Have a good one, folks. Drive safe.